does intelligence lead to happiness? No. <laughs> so, so okay, so back to the pill then. So why, uh, when would you take the pill? So you said IQ 80, 90, 100, 110. You start going through the quartiles and um, is it obvious? Isn't there a... Uh, uh, diminishing returns, and then it starts becoming negative. This is an empirical question. Yes. And so that I have uh, advocated in many forums more research on enhancing the G-factor. Right now, there's n there have been many claims about enhancing intelligence with, you mentioned the NBAC training. It was a, a big deal a few years ago. It doesn't work. Data is very clear. It does not work. To, you know, or doing like memory tests, like it training may, and so on. Yeah, yeah. It may give, it may give you a better memory in the short run, but it doesn't impact your G factor. Um, it was very popular a couple of decades ago that uh, the idea that listening to Mozart could make you more intelligent. There was a paper published on this with somebody I knew published this paper. Uh, intelligence researchers never believed it for a second. Been hundreds of studies, all the meta analyses, all the summaries, and so on. So it, 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 there's nothing to it, mm -hmm. nothing to it at, at all. <laughs> but 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 yeah. wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be world shaking if you could take the normal distribution of intelligence, which we haven't really talked about yet, but IQ scores and the G factors thought to be a normal distribution, and shift it to the right so that everybody is smarter. Even a half a standard deviation would be world-shaking because there are many social problems, many, many social problems that are exacerbated by people with lower ability to reason stuff out and navigate everyday life. So, I wonder if there's a threshold. So maybe I would push back and say universal shifting of the normal distribution may not be the optimal way of shifting. Maybe it's better to uh, whatever the asymmetric tank kind of distributions is like really pushing the lower up versus uh, trying to make the... Uh, people at the average more intelligent. So you're saying that if in fact there was some way to increase G, let's yeah. just call it metaphorically a pill, an IQ yes. pill, we should only give it to people at the lower end. No, it's just <laughs> intuitively, I I can see that life becomes easier at the lower end yes. if it's increased. It becomes less and less, it is an empirical scientific question, but it becomes less and less obvious to me that more intelligence is better. At the high end, it not because it would make life easier, but it would make whatever problems you're working on more solvable. And if you are working on artificial intelligence, there's a tremendous potential to good, for, for that to improve society. I understand, but the, so, at the, whatever problems you're working on, yes. But there's also the problem of the human condition. There's love, there's fear, and all of those beautiful things that sometimes if you're good at solving problems, you're going to create more problems for yourself. It's, uh, I'm not exactly sure. So ignorance is bliss is a thing. So there might be a place, there might be a sweet spot of intelligence given your environment, given your personality, all of those kinds of things. And that becomes less beautifully complicated the more and more intelligent you become. But that's a, that's a, that's a question for literature, not for science, perhaps. Well, you, but you, imagine this. Imagine yeah. there was an IQ pill, yeah. and it was developed by a private company, and they are willing to sell it to you. And whatever price they put on it, you are willing to pay it because you would like to be smarter. Yes. But just before they give you a pill, they give you a disclaimer form to sign. Yes. Uh, don't hold us that we're, 
you understand that this pill has no guarantee that your life is going to be better. And in fact, it could be worse. (laughs) Well, yes, that's how lawyers work. But I would love for science to answer the question to try to predict if your life is going to be better or worse when you become more uh, more or less intelligent. It's a, it's a fascinating question about what is the sweet spot for the human condition. Uh, some of the things we see as uh, bugs might be actually features, may be crucial to our uh, overall happiness, is our limitations might lead to more happiness than less. But again, more intelligence is better at the low end. That's more, that's, that's something that's less arguable and, 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 and fascinating if possible to increase. But, but you know, there's virtually no research that's based on a neuroscience approach to solving that problem. All the solutions that have been proposed to solve that problem or to ameliorate that problem are essentially based on the blank slate assumption that, you know, enriching the environment, removing barriers, all good things, by the way, I'm not against any of those things, but there's no empirical evidence that they're going to improve the general reasoning ability or make people more employable. Have you read Flowers of uh, Algernon? Yes. That's to the question of intelligence and happiness. There are many profound aspects of that story. It was a a film that was very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, The film was called Charlie, for the younger people who are listening to this. Uh, You might be able to stream it on Netflix or something. But uh, it it was a story about uh, a person with very low IQ who underwent a surgical procedure in the brain and he slowly became a genius. And the tragedy of the story is the effect was temporary. It's a fascinating story, really. That goes in contrast to the the basic human experience that each of us individually have, but it raises the question of the, the, the the full range of people you might be able to be. Uh, given different levels of intelligence, 